And welcome back to Let's Play Katawa Shoujo. Last time we had an encounter with Lily for the first time. Now I will be toning it down on the LR shenanigans because it slowed down the pace of the video extremely. Uh, however, I will try to keep her British accent. How well I can do that is no promise, however. As she stands up to follow me, she takes hold of a straight rectangle cane that had been slipped in the handle of her bag on the floor. Compared to that cane the boy had in my class, Lily looks much thinner and longer. If you know what I mean, it's not about the size, it's how big it is. With... I, I, don't, I don't know. His must be for support, whereas Lily's for navigation. Cause you need the deck to navigate through the classes. Together we leave the peaceful room and enter the empty hallway, on the way to the library. Side by side, my pace carefully slowed to match hers, we slowly walk through the hallways. It doesn't take long for us to arrive at the door to the warm looking room, apparently situated in the center of the floor rather than either wings. Ladies first. She gives an appreciative smile at the gesture, taking the lead as we fill in. To the left is the wooden library counter, with the library prodder being on the direct. It easily dwarfs my whole school's library, with the distinct smell of old books giving the place an almost old world air. There don't seem to be a lot of students here, considering the time, it isn't a big surprise, everyone's probably either in the school grounds or the dorm. Yuko, are you here? She says it to the Tineo, since the librarian doesn't seem to be present, and of course Lily can't see this. What's unexpected is that it draws a reaction. Thud! That was unexpected. Something from under the counter tuts against it. <laughs> it's not her dick. No, 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 it's her cane. Against it, followed by a quiet wail. <gasps> I don't know whose voice that is. Uh, it's her voice, apparently. I don't have a voice for her, so we're gonna have to make something up. Uh, the origin, apparently, the librarian quickly crawls out and bounces up to the extremely rigid attention. Hi, Lily. How can I help you? I don't know. Usually, librarian are an old lady, so I'm gonna have an old lady voice for her, even though she looks like she's 18-ish. Her voice is strained in a falling attempt. Yeah, see, strained, strained old lady. Same thing. Get off my back, guys. It's fucking hard finding new voice for people, especially girls. There. A strained and failing attempt to sound casual, and she's rubbing the back of her head. Good afternoon. What happened just now? I heard a strange sound. It's nothing. I just hit my head. See, I dropped an eraser under my desk, and when I was looking for it, a pencil dropped, and when I was looking for both of them, you came and surprised me. I just really, really need a new pair of glasses. Or maybe a monocle, because that's what whole people like us use nowadays. Anyway. Are oh, you all right? I'm sorry, I couldn't know. It's okay, it's okay. Sorry for making you worry, little child. This is nothing. I've I've had worse happen to me. Oh, back in my days, I had such a thrill. She's quick to reverse Lily's apology, almost frantically trying to push aside the possibility that she could be in any way inconvenienced by bashing her head on the counter. Yes, worse things have happened. <laughs> oh, I was such a young fool back then. <laughs> These damn kids always on my lawn. The girl fidgets with her fingers as Lily doesn't seem to drop her concerned expression, and then she shuffles some papers around the counter for no reason. A little shorter than Lily, repleted with glasses, freckles, and a very troubled look. She seems to fit the library perfectly, just like an old lady would. Ah, uh, Lily, did you get my message? I send it on a paper, via, via, uh, what do you guys use nowadays, this call? A phone? No, 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 we don't have that. We have gramophone. That's more fun. Message? Hmm. Oh, the two important books that arrived. Right, right, they finally came. I can't believe it took so long, but... Oh. Amidst her celebration, partially for managing to change the topic, I'm sure she noticed me from the corner of her eyes and freezing on the spot when she does. 
Oh, oh no, I'm sorry for not noticing you before, young little child. May I interest you in one of my old decrepit books? You have from the old Egyptian hunting, and we have some, uh, uh, I don't know what you'd like these days, cookies? We, we, we should only have those too, with some teaspoon. Do you need to check out a book, or a little one? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm so forgetful these days. The way she quickly shifts between moods is a little unsetting. He's with me, you, you go. This is you, and the student, the viewer, this is Yuko, the school's librarian. Pleased to meet you. Oh, you, yes, you, pleased to meet you too. You. <laughs> I'm sorry, at my old age it's really hard to learn new names, so we try to repeat it a lot. For a second she visibly attempt to engrave the name on her mind so she won't forget. You go often a lunch to import foreign books and bribe for me. Would you like to tell you a little something about the library? Lily's innocent suggestion is met with an expression of abject terror. I, uh, please, Lily, I can't. Oh, I certainly can't. I don't know what he could be interested in. There's too much responsibility. I don't have enough experience, I'm afraid, my young child. How is it any responsibility at all, I don't get, but her objection is so sincere I don't doubt for a second that she would rather disembowel herself on the spot than tell me where the light novels are. But... So there are a lot of books in Braille here. I attempt to save the day by asking the first thing that pops into my head. It seems to work at least partially as Yuko seems to not exactly relax but at least look slightly less tense. Well, I, I think about a third or a fourth of Yamaku's libraries either in Braille or audio. <laughs> That's more convenient because not everybody can read here. We didn't have school in my days, so we had to travel through twelve thousands of kilometers of snow to get to school. And that was just for a whole week. Makes sense, given the blind students that be here. If it's only that, how come this library is so big in the first place? Well, we get a lot of new books regularly because the library is adequately endowed. Get it, Ken Kink? That's probably why. They spend more on the new book than on my salary. I get only paid with a quarter of an orange. It's just like Christmas, that's we only get what... That's the only thing we get. Sorry, I'm just getting all over myself. <laughs> Reminds me of my past Christmas times where I had orange every day. That was such a good weekend. And then I'd have to organize a shelf of all of them. <laughs> Sorry, I get sidetracked so easily. It's so troublesome and they're away so much. I wish I could quit this job, but then uh, I would have to go into retirement and that's no fun. Hmm. A very awkward silence followed this revelation of too much information. <laughs> yes, quite indeed. <laughs> hmm. I'll go check the L then, if you don't mind. It's probably best for all of us if she doesn't keep talking to me. Very well. Meanwhile, Yuko, I will have those books if it's all right with you. My first impression was right. The library is surprisingly big. And bling down the narrow aisle, I study the, spin of s the spines of the books in a random order, occasionally sliding one out to read the blurb, taking it with me if it looks good. In a few moments, I have a respectable stack of books in my arms. Give me a second, I need to drink something. Alright, that's much better. I guess I'll never be stuck for a choice in here. The normality of the library sinks in. Sure, there are large printed and braille books scattered throughout, but it's what it is, a library. It's as if the calm mood for, from the room I had tea with Lily and snuck with us in here, unless it was here to begin with. Sorry, voice crack on that one. Something about that puts me at ease. Buds me? Hmm. Puts me at ease. Just like before. I reach the end of the aisle and find a collection of desks set up for studies or personal reading. Going a little further though, I discover a nice quiet corner at the back. 
while the rest of the library has the odd student sitting at the desk, either reading or stealthily sleeping, the back is pretty much deserted. As I glance around, I see someone who I recognize sitting on one of the several beanbags. Oh, finally, we get to meet her! I was hoping we could see her. I mean, she looks really fun. Except the vines on her face. Anyway, it's the dark-haired girl from, the, from my class, the one who snuck out of the classroom earlier. She's reading a book, keeping it close to her face, which makes her look like she's really into it. From the way she was acting today, I had her pegged as a more of a delinquent than a bookworm. In fact, her mysterious disappearance from the class raised all sorts of whys in my head. Intrigue floats slowly but surely towards the surface, and before I knew, before I knew it, I'm walking towards the mysterious long-haired girl. I guess there's no harm in introducing myself as I would with anyone else. She's a classmate after all. Walking over to another beanbag, I take a seat and lay my books beside it. The girl starts looking scaredly up at me from underneath the fringe. This is the first time I've seen her this close. Underneath her long dense bang, I can see the part of her face at least a third, if not half. It's pretty badly scarred. My eyes are immediately drawn to the scars, subconsciously peeking past her line until I meet her own eyes. For a second I am shocked and divert my eyes to the book in her hands before I realize that looking away probably only makes it worse. It takes too many seconds to collect myself and remember what I walked up to her for. Um, I think we should have the casual approach and not be like creep and be too forceful so sorry I didn't mean to startle you oh, it's okay and I don't have a voice for her yet so I'm gonna try to find something as she talks a little more the girl suddenly doesn't look like it's okay but I let us line so um, do you mind if I sit here she seems to be to be very uncertain whether it's okay or not for me to sit but finally she nods just a little Okay, senpai. <laughs> I don't know, I'm trying stuff. I take the seat next to her and she hides herself behind her book. Life of Pi. Never heard of it. You, bro, didn't you see the movie? It's, it's about Tiger. I don't, I don't know, I haven't seen it either. It's just on the cover thing. So, uh, sorry again for startling you. I'm you. She looks up from her books stalling a little bit before replying. I, I know. We're in the same class. Her speech is stilted and so quiet that it is barely audible, even in the still library. Somehow I think that my delinquent impression of her was wrong. Huh? Hanako, I'm Hanako. I resist the urge to say that's a nice name, just to have something to say, but really, it's the only thing I can think of. I feel like an idiot. Everyone here must be used to be different to each other, and here I am being all butter and fuss about that kind of thing. Don't let me interrupt your reading, I'll, I'll just check these books if you don't mind. She nods a little, sighs a little sigh of relief. So I try to read the covers and the introduction of the books I picked up and she buries her face in her book. Uncomfortable silence consumes us. My eyes still wander to her direction and I sneak peeks at her flowing hair and the scars it's hiding. After a while I realize that she's doing the same and only pretending to immerse in Life of Pi, the book with the tiger. Her gaze is not inquisitive at all. It darts around like a scared rabbit. When her gaze finally meets, the chain reaction is unstoppable. She stands up forcefully from the beanbag and takes a deep breath. Hi. 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 I've got to do something. Without warning, Hanako takes off and runs towards the counter. Her hair like takes off, catches me off guards that I, I don't manage to go after her until she has a good head start. By the time I reach the counter, she is nowhere to be seen. Lily and Yuko are happily chatting away. Knowing that I won't be able to catch Hanako myself, I approach the girls. Hey, did, did you see a notice girl run past here? 
Oh, maybe. What did she look like? Long dark hair, kind of shy. She had, well, some scars on her face. Oh, you wouldn't be talking about Hanako, would you? Yeah, that's her. Yeah, I saw her reading and tried to talk to her, but I think I scared her off something. Oh dear, Yuko, would you excuse me? I had better try and find her. Sure, sure, I'll just hold on to these until you come back. What's going on? I, I'm sorry, but I'll have to explain it to you some other times. Right, well, I'll see you later then. Lily hastily grabs a cane and hurries off to the library. Hurries out of the library and leaving me along with Yuko. I don't think I'll ever get the hang of this place. Did I do something wrong? What did you do? Nothing. I just looking for some books and then she got this fit and ran off. The most offending thing I can think of was that I might have looked at her general direction a few times. Well, she's a very timid girl. You have to be very careful around her. She can be very jumpy. I think she's not accustomed to talking with other people's, like I am, because I have a lot of time, because I'm old. Isn't that a bit strange? I wonder, it's just how she is, I think. <laughs> Yuko doesn't seem that convincing. Then again, maybe this is just the norm around here. Everyone has their own problem, or else they wouldn't be here. But how should I do that with these people? Forcing myself to act overly casually only to makes me feel phony. Like I was supposed to be ignoring the elephant in the room? Yuko fidgets, looking like she wants to say something to that, but resists it. Well, I think it's an elephant only if you feel that way. Otherwise it might be a cougar. Yeah, idiot. I'm old and I need something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I really get way too much into this. I guess she doesn't have a good sense of self-restraint. <laughs> she certainly doesn't. It makes me smile, and she blushed heavily. What? What? Did that sound stupid? Sound creepy, that's for sure. No, no, it's, it sounded really wise. <laughs> I guess you're right. It's more about that than anyone else. It's more about me than anyone else. Neither of us has anything to add, so Yuko fills the silence by shuffling some papers around. People who have papers on their desk really like doing that. Did you find any- oh, sorry. Did you find any books? I should be closing soon. I mean, this library should be closing. But I have to do it. I hope that's not too inconvenient for you. I may have to go home in my casket soon, so I don't want to be late with the closing. Oh yeah, I want some books, but I left them over there because I'll, I'll just go get them. I fetch my stack of books from beside the bing bags where Hanako and I were sitting and return to the counter. Well, you read a lot, don't you? I thought you kids were all about computers and games and no reading at all. I surprised myself with that too, honestly. At least when I really think about it. Oh, god damn it, that was my back. I don't know if the <laughs> microphone got that, but sorry. I had a lot of free time earlier this year, so I just kind of started reading books to fill the time. I couldn't do much else. I see. But she doesn't say anything else and just check out my book for me. I guess this is what they call tact. Holding the library book with one arm, I draw my pocket for the key to the door. A sudden sound from behind startled me, startles me, making me nearly drop the books I'm carrying or the key that I almost managed to get into the lock. Who is it? Oh, it's fucking Surfer Dude! I turn around to see who's talking to me. It's Kenji. He seems to be in a friendly mood, although the light glinting off his glasses and dark gives me gives him a sinister look. It's just me. This makes him pause and lick his lips nervously. Who's me? I don't know anyone called me, dude. Are you some new guy again, bro? His voice suddenly strained and quiet <laughs> and quick. Yes, but we've met before, yesterday. 
I don't think so, dude. I would remember someone I met only yesterday. When was that? Uh, what day is it today? I try to ignore him. Is he joking or what? Prove that we've met before, dude. I gotta hit the tide. It's Stubler. You live across the hall. You're Kenji. Kenji jumps back. His eyes fill with uncomprehending fear. How do you know my name? Damn, bro. This can only mean one thing. Or two. Either we have met, or you're telling the truth. And I just can't remember it. Or you're a spy, bro. That's so radical. He pauses. A psychic spy. Bro, that is so tight. His eyes dart around, trying to peek into in my room. Although, it's hard to believe he can't see anything through these thick glasses. His mood swung from friendly to manic in less than a minute. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not psychic. How do I know that? I'm not a mind reader, bro. Kitchy points a finger in my face, damning me. Unlike you, dude, bro, bro, dude. Stop that, man. We've met yesterday. What's wrong with you? I live in this room. Lies, bro. I see. If you think you can pass as Hisao or you the viewer because I'm legally blind, you're sorely mistaken, bro. That's not cool. You don't even look like him. I mean, the resemblance is real. Real slim, maybe at a distance, but who do you think you're kidding? I want to grab him by the shoulder and shake him. Exasperate. I rub my eyes and let out a navy sigh. Stay here. Stay there. Stay over here. Stop moving, goddammit. Can she come closer? One careful step at a time. I stay still, lest he assault me physically, although I doubt he could do much damage even if he did. Oh, wait, I see now. Damn, it is really you, bro. Shit, I need to stop smoking that weed. So I hit again. And then, once again, for good measure, I step back, so just in case. What's up, Ben? <laughs> you don't look too good. I think it's something wrong. I don't know. I just had something stupid happen to me. A few stupid things, actually. Even if you discount this one. I can't get a proper touch of other people's ear. And I have no idea if it's because of me or because of them. I don't know why I'm telling this, Kenji. It's not like we've had any contact either. That's rough, dude. Yeah, really, dude. <laughs> I should have said, that's rough, dude, dude. Because that would have been more in character. <sighs> yeah, I'm sorry about killing you a psychic spy and all. But you can never be too careful. Let me put my aluminium helmet now. That's the hard reality we live in. I'm slowly starting to think that Kenji isn't... Oh, well. <laughs> sorry. We're back to narrating. Let me get some water. This, this voice is really strenuous. Nothing water can wash away. I'm slowly starting to think that Kenji isn't necessarily living the same reality as the rest of us. You see, this is how it is. This world... Ah, oh, yeah, this died. Sorry about that. There's no justice, you see? <coughs> Even when I lose, I win. Because I don't lose the lesson. What does that even mean? It, it doesn't matter, bro. He disses it flatly. With a wave of his hand, trying to blow away the smoke. <laughs> so what happened? Why a lot of face? Do you have do you have a lot of face? Yeah, it's nothing. I just scared some girl off accidentally. Literally too. She actually ran away from me. It was my fault really. I think I'm not really used to this all yet. A girl? A cute one? Cute? That's that's a hard question. She had a nice body and really beautiful hair, but the face, I guess I could go either way. Now she was cute, let's put a good word for her. Yeah, cute, I guess. I knew it! There are a lot of cute girls here, and straight to the proportion and amount, I believe this one of the dark secret of this school. I try to warn you, man, but did you listen, dude? Did you listen, dude? I don't remember any such warning. Back to this voice. I don't remember any such warning. Dark secrets. Yeah, dark secret. Extremely dark. Like a black hole. Or maybe 
Amer American African hole because we we're not racist here. Have you noticed that number of girls in the school is slightly but significantly higher than the number of boys? It's like 60 to 40 because we're exactly 100. He turns his head to the left and stares off in the distance at nothing. What is this? I mean, to the untrained eyes. Look who's fucking talking, bro. It doesn't appear to be that bad, but that's a full 20%. One would think that a school with such a huge pool of women would be a mainstream, but no! What I'm about to tell you could blow your mind. <sighs> oh, yeah, that's tight. Are you ready? I don't know where this is going. Back to this voice again. I don't know where this is going, but I think I won't be missing much by cutting out now. No, I'm not ready. I only get as far as turning the door now before Kenji starts talking again, showing that he doesn't really care if my mind's blown or not. I believe that this school is a battleground that set up feminist infiltration. This disparity in the number of men to women is a clear sign of how far they have come. In case this Cold War turns hot, they will have superiority in numbers, bro. Just another skirmish in the eternal war against the force of the feminism. They're everywhere. In Japan, women outnumbers men. It's not 60-40 split, but it's only a matter of time, man. Even in America, women are majority by hair. They're building up their numbers. In the past, doubling up in military has always been the clearest sign of imminent war. Japan, bro, is just the first step. First, you take on the island of Japan, and then you go for China, and when you rule China, you rule also Korea, and when you rule Korea, you can send out the nukes. But Japan's the first step. Her economy is badass, and the country itself is small and isolated, yet a huge part of the Pacific in terms of, pot of political value. The perfect target? They're so cunning, as expected of women's. Soon the day will come when I will take over the world. Genji's voice trails off ominously. This is why you can trust them. They'll start. They'll string you along. And then kill you. Just as they killed me. You will end up just like me. Oh, hell no. I can't stop myself from blurting it out. Hey, what the hell does that mean? You said it, not me. It's the best I can think of. So, you're not supposed to say something like that? Damn, so rude, bro. What was I? Oh, yeah, vast feminism conspiracy, bro. Shit, the stubler. <laughs> Stop it. Stop. You stop it right now. I lost you way back. Way back there, somewhere. Somewhere around the feminism filters you. Do I have to follow? It's cool. I have some graphs and stuff in my room. And puppets. You like puppets? Fuck no. No puppets. You don't like puppets? Okay, graph is still cool. Though, no, right? You speak energetically, responding almost before I'm done talking, moving in an animated way that as he continues to run on. It is too strange. I had him pegged as relatively normal, but it's clear that I was wrong. Something on your mind, dude? Uh, just thinking about what it's like to be the last sane man in an insane world. Not much. Kenji frowns, looking this deeply upset. You mean that's you? I can't be, because I'm the last sane man in an insane world. That's my dream. You can't just steal my man's dream. What the hell? There can't be two last sane men. I would invalidate the word. The whole last part, and that part is kind of important. You can be only one Highlander. Sorry, uh, I mean, there can be only one Gryffindor. Uh, God damn it, there can only be one. Like in that foreign movie where there could be only one. Yeah, exactly, they're speaking of Highlander. And in the end, there's only one dude left because that was the point. Yeah. I feel like every time that I read stuff, I kind of lean my way into what they're gonna say next anyway I have never seen oh, back to the voice I have never seen anyone talk so hard heatedly and so defensively about absolutely nothing before 
Anyway, if you wait here, I can get my graphs. Also, I have a list of other darks and complex comparisons that the school holds as tangled as the Illuminati. Quick, finish my analogy for me. Be a pal. I'm going to bed now. It's extremely late. That doesn't sound like an analogy, but whatever. I like you. You seem like a cool dude, bro. It's, that shit's tubular. I, I like the word tubular. Most people don't understand what I'm talking about when I try to explain the vast feminist conspiracy with them. Denial's a terrible thing. Later! He claps me on the back and then vanish into his room so quickly and quietly. It's like his, he didn't even open the door but instead of walk right through it as a ghost. I don't know if I can full digest what just happened so I give up and just go to my room kick off my shoes before facing, falling face first into bed. Takes me some time to relax and get up so I can start so I can get started on homework. It's because the sheets are cool and comfortable against my cheek, and it feels just lying here with my eyes closed. The school's like some kind of bizarre and surreal island. It's isolated on top of a mountain and each person's stranger than the last. I just can't seem to fit in. What irony. One would think it fitting in a place that's made for people who are unfit for anywhere else would be easy. Maybe I'm trying too hard. Although, I say that doesn't help take off the edge, and the words are left echoing off my empty walls. I guess it's not as bad as I expected, though. This place really is more of a school, and less of an, less an hospital, pretending it's a school that I thought it would be. If nothing else, this area is beautiful. I open one eye, seeing my school books with a bottle of pills arranged side by side on my desktop. Need water again. Maybe this place is too much like a normal school after all. Ding it, ding it, ding it, ding. Get to watch Shoujo in case you forgot we were playing this game. And we're starting, which would seem like somewhat of a new part of the chapter. So I'm going to stop the recording here because we're way over 32 minutes. And I will hope to hopefully see you in the next part. See you guys later.